Ready. Just.
science with confidence. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Thank you, praise team, so very, very much. It is so good to have Elizabeth back with us. Amen. Thank you, Elizabeth. We're going to have Miss Irene representing our Stephen ministry to give our invocation. And let me mention, as I do each month, that we always have a new bulletin board with information about the Stephen ministry uh, as you exit to your left. And uh, if you have any questions about the Stephen ministry, this is the dear lady to talk to afterwards. Good morning. morning. Repeat after me. I'm a child of God. I will follow him in thought, word, and deed. Let us pray. Precious Heavenly Father, Christ our Savior, Holy Spirit, our guide, our precious hovering spirit, please be within us today, all around us. Help us to seek you in everything. Help us to see it in each other. I ask for your blessing upon this service and all the activities going on here today. And bless all those who serve you in these services and activities. We ask for your blessing upon your word. May your message today have a special meaning for everyone here, something that they can take away and share with others, especially with their neighbors, their friends, and those who do not yet know you. We pray, Lord, for your attention in this area and that we will seek you and follow you in everything we do. Continue to bless us, bless all who serve. We thank you in Jesus' precious name, amen. All righty, if I have any kids, if you'd come up and we're going to do a rosy dog story this morning. Y'all ready to help me? You ready? Rosie dog, Rosie dog, what's she gonna do? Rosie dog, Rosie dog, she like me and you. Rosie dog, Rosie dog, what's she gonna do? She's got a message from Jesus to you. She's got a message from Jesus to you. All righty. So... Rosie Dog the other day, she was just feeling anxious. As many of you all know, Pastor Justin and us, we are moving, and so is Rosie Dog. And she was so anxious and just scared. And we all have different things that whenever we get scared or just anxious that we like to just go distract ourselves. And one of the things Rosie Dog likes to do is she likes to go to the Woodland store called Woodmart. Do you all ever go to Woodmart? Woodmart? So Rosie Dog was at Woodmart and just busy there. She was just, she goes, I, I just so anxious. You know, I've got, I, I'm leaving all my friends, the woodland, the swampland creatures. She's like, I'm so anxious, so nervous, so scared about things. What is my life going to be like? And while she was there, she happened to run into a key individual. I don't know if you all know about him. You've heard of Peter Rabbit, but have you heard of Petros the Rabbit? Now, Petros the rabbit, he's a little bit bigger and a stronger rabbit than most of your other rabbits. And he has very, been very gifted with visions from God and all that. And he, he happened to run into Rosie Dog there. And he was talking and saw that Rosie Dog was feeling upset and anxious. And he was talking to Rosie Dog. And he says, you know what? I, I've been down those roads, you know, where you're scared and anxious. He goes, I remember when I went to my first day of school. Do you all remember your first day of school? Were you scared? scared about your first day. I remember I, I remember going my first day, and I was so nervous and anxious, and I didn't know if I'd be with my friends that I had the last year, and you just never know, especially going in the summer, who are you, you know, we're going to keep in touch with all of our different friends, and so he was sharing that with Rosie Dog Petros was, and he goes, you know what, whenever I get really scared and nervous and anxious, he goes, I do something that King J.C. the bullfrog had taught his disciples. He goes, whenever you get nervous and scared, or whenever you have different issues, he goes, you can pray. And he goes, I'm going to teach you a prayer. And so you all repeat after me as Petros taught Rosie Dog. And he goes, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever 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 and ever. That's what Petros told Rosie Dog. That God has the power. God has the power. Jesus has the power to help Rosie Dog, to help each of us through the different seasons of our lives, the changes. No matter what fear we have, we have Jesus there. But also, you know what else he gives us? New friends, old friends that we get to stay connected with. And she made a friend with Petros that day and got a little bit more bonded with him. And he goes, I've suffered and you've suffered. And that's what we have. We can all do things together because we're a big body of believers, brothers and sisters. You all may be young enough to be my kids, but you're going to be my sisters and brothers one of these days. I say amen to that. Heavenly Father, what a blessing we have here to be able to call on your name, to pray to you. I ask for your hand upon these kids, upon the teachers, upon this body of believers here that suffers together through different things. Dear Lord, guide us Instruct us. Help us to lean on you today, Jesus. Help us to pray that prayer you taught your disciples. And you will be with us through all things forever and ever and ever and ever. Amen. All righty. You all have a wonderful day. Stand up. Turn around. And don't sit back down. (laughs) Say hello to your neighbor. Bond. If you would stay standing as you come back to your pew, to your area, we are going to read our scripture this day for this beautiful Sunday and the sermon that God has prepared for us. Our scripture comes from 1 Peter 5, 6 through 11. Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Resist him. Stand firm in the faith because you know that the family of believers throughout the world is undergoing the same kind of sufferings. And the God of all grace who called you to his eternal glory in Christ after you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Do we have Larry and Barbara Starkey here today? If y'all will come forward, and Miss Roz, we are so excited. We have a new couple joining our church today, and we have asked each of our couples. Are they clapping for, for you and I, Roz? I, don't, I thought so. Maybe it was, you know. <laughs> we, we asked each of our couples to make their public profession of faith by answering these questions. I'm going to raise questions. Many of you have been through this same question, and in their packet, they received uh, the bookmark that has these um, uh, verses that we're going to share. This is our year of the Bible. We're, we're falling back on the Holy Word of God. And so the first two, if you'll say, I do, and the second two with, I will, okay? Do you, before this company here today, renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, accepting the power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, oppression, and reject the evil powers of this world and repent of your sins? 
I do. According to the grace given you through the sacrifice of our Lord, do you before this company confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in His grace, promise to serve and represent Him as your Lord, remain faithful to His church, which Christ is open to people of all ages, nations, and races? I do. As members of Christ's universal church, will you be loyal to the church and its congregation by faithfully participating in the ministries by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, and your service to strengthen its ministries? Will you acknowledge the Bible in its entirety as the inspired Word of God, agreeing that all Scripture is given by inspiration of God, profitable for doctrine, for reproof, correction, instruction, and righteousness, and that we are to be doers of the Word and not hearers only, deceiving ourselves. In addition, will you strive to adhere to the words of Jesus, do to others what you would want them to do to you? This was what was written in the law and in the prophets through the acknowledgement of this vow, Will you hold to the principles of God's holy word, study them, follow them, and honor them? Let us pray. I'm going to ask congregation if you'll stretch out your hands toward this wonderful couple. Father, we thank you for bringing them our way. They graciously so many Sundays bring their grandchildren with them. What a blessing that is for each and every one of us. And we pray for those grandchildren. We ask a special blessing on Larry and Barbara. Lord, we just pray that, that their journey of faith will continue right here at Dunellen Methodist and that our faith might be a blessing to them. Father, thank you again for Ms. Roz, our chairperson, and all that work together to build the kingdom of God. For it is in the name of Christ we pray, amen. amen. Let's welcome again Larry and Barbara Starkey. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. You have our new certificates with our new emblem of the Global Methodist Church on there. We hope that after the service that you will greet them if you get the opportunity to do that. Can we all say amen? amen. All right, Brother Justin. I think that's a praise report right there, especially if we look at our scripture and talking about that we all are going to, well, hopefully this isn't, the, you get to suffer with us as what I get to say out of the scripture. We get to help one another. And what a blessing it is to have more people come into our local family. The local family that is not just local, but it spreads out across this beautiful planet that God created. And what a blessing we have to be able to have the Holy Spirit that connects us to one another. There is no geographical limit to the Spirit moving, to a family connected through the sweet Spirit of Jesus Christ. And that is something that we have awesome to praise about today, especially with as we head to our Heavenly Father and lift up our concerns. And I again want to lift up the praise report about all the graduates and what a blessing they have in this time of transition in their lives and the fears that I know that they have. So we want to add them to our prayers and to the families of the Harmony Preschool students as we will have probably a little bit less contact with them as some of them graduate and go out into public school systems. So we ask that we have hopefully planted the seeds that God wanted us to in each of those children. And we just hope that that seed plants and grows in their lives, that they become to know Jesus and can come back into the house of the Lord one day. As we look at our prayer concerns, we want to continue to lift up Barb Ullinger and her husband Jim as uh, she has gone on hospice. We want to pray for them at this time. Uh, Lynn Saracola family, as Lynn has gone on to heaven, we want to pray for his wife Anna and the whole family there. Just be with them. Terry Towers, Nancy Riley, and Ivan Robinson, Violet Johnson, and Carol Meredith. They all had various procedures and all, and just want to ask for the Lord's hand upon them. And we have testing, different testings upcoming this week that we want to remember people in prayer. We have Beverly Snyder, Steve Willis, and Al Gillette, and we just want to ask the Lord to work in those instances, and we want the Lord to work in each of our hearts this day, and uh, I know some prayers have been answered as Bobby makes his way up to uh, pray for us, that Bobby had had some prayers on him and Chip as they went up to Atlanta, Georgia, and, uh, and the Lord blessed them as their travels and brought them home to us here again today, and I get to have the privilege yet again as time is coming closer to us not being here in person to be blessed with a prayer from Bobby as he intercedes on our behalf to our Heavenly Father that listens. And the altar is open. Bobby, take us to the throne room like you do, brother. Thank you, Justin, for those announcements as um, Chuck makes his way up to
play softly. Uh, again, I'd like to thank Larry and, and Barbara for joining us. They didn't know it, but we already had their paperwork filled out. <laughs> and today we just made it official. And I just I reflect back when I joined a little over 10 years now. They welcomed me with open arms. And Larry and Barbara, we welcome you uh, as our sisters and brothers in, in Christ. Um, we thank Pastor Reddy and um, Justin for, for all they do, for all of us in, in our church. Uh, I think they deserve a little round of applause this morning. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. And uh, he, he sent me a text when we were going to Atlanta. I moved a, a couple um, up there last year, and um, I moved them back, and I had Chip with me. So I thank Pastor for his prayers, because I needed him going and coming. <laughs> but as Justin stated, um, our altar is, is always open for you to come and, and stand in the gap for someone that uh, can't stand for themselves. And it's a beautiful thing when we come to the altar like we used to. I know we brought something today that we care not to take back. So bring it to the altar as Chuck plays softly. We'll go to our Heavenly Father in prayer. Father, we, we thank you today for who you are. We thank you for all that you've done. Father, you allow your children to get up this morning with their health and their strength. You cleared the highways and the byways. You redirected all harm and danger. But you allowed us to come to a place where we are welcome and where you welcome us with open arms. You allowed us to come to cast our cares upon your feet. But Father, somebody brought something today that they care not to take back. And right now, they're going to surrender it all to you. Father, your words say, cast all your cares upon your feet. And by the power that it invested in you, Father, we know you can withstand it all. Right now, we say thank you for all that you've done. Father, we thank you for all that are gathered here right now. All of those that are tuning in online, we thank you. And right now, we're giving back a portion of what you've given us. Father, we thank you for life. We thank you for health. We thank you for our strength that's coming from you. And Father, all the ones that are tuning in online, everyone that's here, I thank you for allowing me to pray for them once again. Father, we know that prayer changes things. We know that prayer answer things, that prayer that take confusions out of situations. We think we know that prayer fixes things that beyond our control. Father, we know that you still sit on the throne this morning. You look down on us, but Father, we know you smile on us once again. But we brought something today that we we dare not to take back. And right now, we surrender it all to our Heavenly Father. We surrender it all to the one who cares. But when the doctor says no, Father, oh God, that's what we say. Oh God, take it away. Father, search our souls right now. Anything that not like thee, we ask that you take it away. Those that gone before us, that leave their loved ones behind. Father, some hearts are heavy, but we know your word says you put no more on us that we can bear. Father, lift us up today. Those that are lost, Father, shine your light so they could see. Those that are struggling with addiction, Father, you've given them the strength to put it down and pick up some Holy Spirit, right now, those that are struggling in relationships, be their guide. Those that have marital difficulties, comfort them. Those that are struggling with that horrible disease caused cancer. But Father, we know above that name is Jesus, 
Above all sickness, there's Jesus. Above all, above all things, is that name Jesus. Oh, what a mighty God we serve. Father, we know you're able to see us through. We know you're able to conquer all things. We know you're able to care for us all. You sent your only son to die for a sinner like me. Oh, Father, how can we ever repay you? But today, we're giving back a portion of what you've given us. And we're giving you the honor and the praise. Father, look on our pastor and our associate today. And Father, as you prepared us as Justin looked to go back home. But Father, what a blessing he's been to all of us and to our church. But Father, we know you're going to lead him and guide him in the direction that you want him to go. But Father, we miss him, but we know you got him in your arms. Remember his family today, our pastor's family, all of their children. Father, you gave them a name. Father, we love you. And as our worship team come, Father, let the songs that we sing be pleasing in thy sight. Father, let the congregation join in. Father, your word says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Father, we thank you for those that come to the altar. I just wish we'd come like we used to and surrender it all. But, Father, we shall give you the praise. Father, in the glory and the honor that you so well deserve. Father, those that are surrendering it to you right now, they surrender it because of who you are. Your word said, cast your cares upon me. <laughs> Father, we give you the praise and the <coughs> honor and the glory. <coughs> and may all of God's people say, amen. amen. Let's all rise together. The altar remains open. If you had a graduate or a graduate about to graduate, I would encourage you to come forward and stand or kneel at the altar a moment, even if they were graduating from Harmony Preschool. That was just, as Justin said, a beautiful time. It's a wonderful time of prayer and worship. Any other needs as well, the altar is open.
and to the broken and shamed. Love is here, love is now, love is pouring from his hands and from his brow. Love is near, it satisfies. Streams of mercy flowing from his side and to the bruised and fallen captive found and broken hearted he is the lord he is the lord by his stripes he paid our ransom from his wounds we drink salvation he is the lord Love is here, love is now, love is pouring from his hands, from his brow. Love is near, it satisfies, streams of mercy flowing from his side. Love is here. Heavenly Father, truly your love, your presence is in this place. May we continue to glorify your holy name. And may all of God's people say, Amen. you may be seated. As Justin mentioned, next Sunday is his last Sunday to be with us here at the church. And we are missing him terribly already. He and his dear family will be moving uh, June 1. I mean, right at, I mean, June number 1, uh, back to Missouri. I do pray and believe that when the first snow sets in, he'll be calling us to come back to this warm, balmy weather of Florida. He has been an incredible blessing for us. So next Sunday... We're going to uh, have Justin preach at all three services, so I hope that you'll be able to be with us uh, to share with him. It's also Pentecost Sunday. It's Memorial Day weekend uh, as well, and so in Pentecost Sunday, it's the one Sunday out of the year that our pyramids change to red, and we encourage everyone that has something red to wear it just to symbolize the power of the Holy Spirit and the solidarity, and that would be great for Brother Justin's last Sunday as well. We do have a basket at the member center this Sunday and next Sunday. Uh, it has cards there if you want to write out a card and envelopes. If you'd like to make a gift to him and his family, that would be wonderful. You can make checks out to the church and then we'll funnel a check to him 100% or you can just make it out uh, to Justin as well and you can bring a card from home or take one of the cards there. But I know many of you will want to write a note for him we have our prayer quilt up for him as well, and I know a lot of you are writing notes on the card for that, uh, but we really want to highlight him and his family next week, and so he'll be again preaching all three services. Um, I want to mention with that, uh, I am doing all three this Sunday. Um, Miss Becky Perry was going to be sharing at this service, but she had her hip surgery, uh, and so she is just not up to par yet to be back with us and uh, preaching, so I put her little father down the line. She will be preaching the Word of God. So we encourage all of you to be here with us next week and to celebrate uh, the saying goodbye to Justin and, and loving on them. This is our last uh, Wednesday and Thursday for the summer months activities that we have in the evenings. And um, so on Wednesday night, our Adam and Eve class are saying their farewells. We have a, a, a get-together party, and I know some of you are involved with that. So I hope you'll be able to come out and be with uh, Justin's family at that time also. Can we all say amen? Amen. amen. Our message today is trust him. Now, we know him is Jesus, and I have a cane here. Ugh. I'm not going to bend over again. 
Is that okay? Are you hearing me okay? Okay, good. I'm not sure what happened there. Maybe it was my back. I did have some back problems here recently. Trust him. Trust him, the Lord. What does that mean? The passage of Scripture that Justin read to us a few moments ago, I think, gives us a plan because trusting in the Lord involves a whole lot of situations, a whole lot of holy God consequences. We have things that we should be doing on our side of the platform as we trust the Lord Jesus Christ. Can we all say amen? amen. I remember when I was in seminary in Kentucky, um, I had uh, left here, I'd finished school um, and um, got my uh, Bachelor of Science degree and I was pastoring in uh, South Florida and so then I went to um, Kentucky where I had spent a lot of my childhood years and I went to school up there and um, after two years you had to apply for ordination back in your home state. So there were three other students with me. I knew one, the other two I did not know, I'd met them, but I did not know them well. So the friend, my, the one I knew, myself sat in the back seat, we rode together. Uh, and they said when we got in the car, coming back to Leesburg, Florida, where our camps used to be here at the United Methodist Church, um, and not too far from Dunellen, um, we, they wanted to drive straight through, just straight through. So I knew that'd be kind of a lengthy uh, journey. And so the gentleman turned around and looked at me that was driving, and he said, we're going to take turns driving, and he said, um, buckle up. And so that, I said, okay, you know, so we buckle up the back seat, front seat, and he took off. I had not been in a car going that fast <laughs> in years. I mean, since I was a boy when I'd done some things I shouldn't have done driving too fast. And so, I mean, we were hitting between 90 and 100 miles per hour. And I remember looking at the friend beside me thinking, are these Christians up here in the front seat here? They're going to get us killed, you know? And I said, I looked at him. I also said, I said, I'm not, when it's my turn, I said, I'm not driving between 90 and 100 miles an hour. I don't just, not going to do that. Well, we pulled off to, uh, to get a drink and, and to go to the restroom and get back in the car. And I sat back down in the back seat and the other guy got into the driver's seat that was in the other side there. And, and he turned around and looked and said, remember again, put your seatbelt on. And I remember thinking, my seat seatbelt will do nothing for me <laughs> at 90 to 100 miles an hour. Amen. I said, you know, so I thought that's, well, who am I to trust? I'm trusting in God. That seatbelt's not going to do anything for me. Well, what do we do when we trust the Lord? You see my cane. This is a gift from a, a member of our church, lives right down the road uh, from me, he was uh, venturing up north, saw a gentleman making the canes and said, saw that it says Jesus saves on it. It says Jesus is Lord and that Jesus is love. And he said, I'd like to have that. And the man gave it to him. And so he brought it to my house and gave it to me. It's a cedar. It's great. I've been using it a lot lately, you see. Now, what would I use a cane for if I'm trusting in the Lord? You know, now I told you I had some back problems uh, recently, but if I'm praying, why would I need a cane, Right. You know, what do I use a cane for if I'm trusting in the Lord? Well, what I use it more than anything for early in the morning, late at night, when I walk my puppy dogs is to get rid of spider webs. Somebody say amen. amen. Now, I thought about praying, Lord, make those spiders not send out any web, you know, where I'm walking because I can't. I can't stand to walk into a spider web. I, I have had more Holy Ghost dances when I've stepped into one of those that I'd like to say. You know, but is that fair for me to pray? I mean, is God on my side or on the spider's side? I mean, is the spider praying? Lord, you know, I want to send out my spider web today. Do I have the right to pray against his spider web just because I don't want to walk into it? You know, I'm trusting God, trusting God with my cane. Now, I think God gives us a cane in a variety of ways. The A of our ABCs today, as we trust the Lord, is to be alert, to be alert. How are we to be alert? Well, the Scripture says, humble thyself in the sight of the Lord, and He will lift you up. God is calling us to humble ourselves constantly 
That is a good way to keep yourself on your side of the platform in a position where God can minister to you. How do you do that? Follow the spiritual disciplines. I humble myself personally every morning. I kneel before God physically. Now, I know some of you may not be able to do that, but the ones that are, I would encourage that. I bow physically before the King of kings and Lord of lords. That does something for me on my side of the platform. It humbles me. It humbles me. I try to follow those spiritual disciplines with prayer and Bible study and being good to others and given to the kingdom of God. All of those areas humble me in the presence of God. The Bible also tells us to love. We all know that. Do you remember the love chapter in 1 Corinthians chapter 13? It tells us that that love is the most beautiful and most powerful thing in the world. That in this world, we look through a mirror darkly. And it means the idea of that day and age, the mirrors were not always very clear, not like mirrors today. Remember, we're talking 2,000 years ago. It says you look in a mirror darkly. You can't see your image perfectly back in that day. But in Christ, through love and grace and faith and believing in him, we have the power of God. Love one another, the Bible says. They will know you are Christians by your love. Greater man hath none than this, that he lay down his life for his sisters and brothers. We are called to love one another. That's what it's all about. And that's hard to do. Hard to do. Sometimes we want to take the cane and wrap their heads. Amen? Sometimes we're struggling with people and we're just really frustrated. And I want to say with that, That the uh, Vacation Bible School team, I want you to, uh, that was two strikes already against them with the Seminoles and the bald eagle, you know. But I know that the Bible says that vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. So I'm not going to do anything, not going to do anything, but I don't forget. I want you to know. I want you to know there in that light. The B of our ABCs gives us another hint how to, to trust him. It tells us that our believers, which are the brothers and sisters in Christ, the believers are struggling just like we are. So therefore, Peter says, because you know that, resist the devil. Now, how could just knowing that my brothers and sisters, the believers, the B of our ABCs, are struggling like I am, help me resist Christ because we need each other. Because that means you're helping each other. Now think about the many passages of Scripture where there's more than one involved. Jesus said, where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst of them. When Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane, he was not alone. He took Peter, James, and John. And when you have gatherings of small groups like that, accountability groups, you can be honest. It can be in confidence. Jesus was frustrated with them. He could share openly his feelings. He said, I, I, I'm praying my heart's being poured out and you're falling asleep. You can tell his frustration, his human frustration at that moment there. Dear friends, I remember years ago in Kentucky when I was pastoring up there in seminary, I had a revival and we brought this old Kentucky fellow uh, to come preach for us. And he was amazing, fire and brimstone. Everybody loved him. And he gave his testimony, and he said, I remember when I was in a drunken stupor, I fell down in a ditch. Somebody came along, he said, and then Jesus came into my heart. I got out of that ditch, never took a drink again, saved, became a preacher. And I tell you, the congregation went wild. It was just, it was a great sermon. It was powerful. But I remember thinking when he was saying those words, that doesn't work for everybody. Not everybody has the strength of God to just get out of that ditch unless somebody there gives them a hand. We support the AA groups. We've started the Celebrate Recovery groups. These are opportunities where two or three can gather together in my name in the house of God. We need each other, and it's wrong not to help and use each other. Dear friends, if we're going to grow in Christ, we've got to grow together. Christianity is not... Remember that song, you know, me and Jesus got a good thing going? That is so theologically wrong. (laughs) You know, it is you and Jesus, but you need others. 
You need others. Jesus needed others. He had the 12. We need others. We need to be working together for the kingdom of God. Bob White sent out a note to a few of us the other day on the church council, uh, some of the, the leadership that he was talking to, and it was an article that was fantastic, and it lifted up the idea of Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, three uh, individuals from the Old Testament, and every time you read one of their names, the other two are there. I had never thought about that until I read the article. The other two are there, meaning the idea that they worked through things together. They are the ones that were thrown, if you remember, into the fiery furnace. Would they have had the uh, courage and the ability and the strength to stand up for their faith if they didn't have their brothers with them? I don't know. I don't know. They were always together. God wants us to be together. God is calling us together. And that's why I believe that Peter says the believers, the believers, you see, in their suffering, you know they're suffering too, will help you resist the devil. Can you say amen? Amen. Peter himself needed a special counseling session with Jesus after Jesus' resurrection. Matter of fact, he needed three sessions. Do you remember? Peter, do you love me? Peter, do you love me? Peter, do you love me? How many times did Peter deny Jesus? He needed three sessions with Jesus. Peter, James, and John. They were great men of God, but they needed each other. And they leaned on each other like we can lean on a cane. The C of our ABCs, I love the way it was emphasized in the Scripture. And even Bobby brought it up in the prayer a few moments ago. Cast all your care upon him, for he careth for you. And you know what that means, don't you? What, what Bobby says all the time, the opening of the prayers. David, you used to say it all the time. God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. Hebrews 11.6, you must believe that God is and that he is a faithful rewarder for those who diligently seek him. Just recently, we did a sermon on Thomas because it was Easter. And I love the story of Thomas because Jesus came to him. Jesus came to him. But you know where he came to him at? He came to him at church. He came to him at church. Friends, it's so important to invite people to church. So important. If we had this crowd right here today and those online, and you all invited one person to church, somebody's going to come. I know that not everybody's going to come, but somebody's going to come. Percentage-wise, that would happen. Invite them to church so they can hear the good news of Jesus Christ. Thomas was in church Sunday after Easter. He wasn't there on Easter, but the Sunday after, and Jesus comes to him and meets him where he is. He meets him where he is. He wants to meet our brothers and sisters where they are, and how can we get them to the Lord? Bring them to church. Bring them to church. Can we say amen? Amen. Dear friends, God is calling us, I believe, for a religious CAT scan. <laughs> I think we need a spiritual CAT scan. Now, if you, all of you probably have had tests or have had family members test with those type of scans today. There's a zillion different types of scans. But remember, the CAT scan is, is the um, loop that is, it's like a rotating uh, pictures, different angles, And that's why it's so important into the tissues of your body. Uh, It's just incredible. We need a variety of ways to experience Jesus. We're starting a new program of reading the Bible. It's going to be in the next newsletter, which will come out in the 1st of June. I I encourage you to read it and be praying about it. You You need a partner. It doesn't have to be somebody in the church, just somebody you know that will read the same scriptures you're reading, and you'll have the opportunity to talk to them on your own, maybe weekly or monthly. Hey, did you get anything out of that? We need that. You don't need to read the Bible just yourself. You need to hear some other person's view, some other person's ideas. How's the Holy Spirit speaking to them? What is he saying in this passage so that we can hear the Word of God together? We need to be doing this. I encourage you. We're going to have that opportunity coming up. I just mentioned about how important worship is. I mentioned it last week at the 8 and at the 11 o'clock service, friendship evangelism. 
Friendship evangelism instead of friendship evangelism. And the friend is an acronym where friends, relatives, associates, and neighbors. Everybody's got a friend. Well, maybe some of you don't, you know, but I, yeah, we'll pray about that. Everybody's got a friend. Everybody's got a relative. Everybody's got an associate. Everybody's got a neighbor. You fit in there somewhere, and you can be praying about inviting them to Jesus. Just like we're going to do at Vacation Bible School to teach them about Jesus. Just like the bags that we give out through the uh, committee there. Brother uh, Charlie will be out in the Northex in a minute. Those bags when you go pick up your groceries, advertising. We are trying to just get Jesus out to the world. Amen. Amen. You know, um, a couple months ago I went down to my first church I pastored back in the early 80s. It's been sold. The United Methodist Church closed it and sold it. And um, it's some kind of far eastern temple. That's what it is now. Uh, there's some shrines around the outside. I was thinking about that as I was thinking about how to end the sermon today. And I, I think it was the Lord telling me this because I'm not sure why it came to me except that he wants me to share it. And as I was thinking about the pastor that started that church right after World War II, Reverend R.C. Joyner. He was a strawberry farmer from Plant City. He wanted a church in his own community. And so he started the church, and he was the first pastor. We had his picture, I remember, in the church. And he had retired, uh, was working as a visitation pastor, a lot like Bob Weimer did here for us a number of years ago. And um, I, so I got to know him in those last years. He was using, and I know none of you do this, what's that stuff where your hair one week is gray or white, and the next week it's black as smut? What's, what's that? And you know what it is. I remember his, yes, his eyebrows would turn so black. <laughs> he started that church, and I was feeling bad about that, you know, because the church is gone, you know? And I thought, oh, that's just so sad. I remember being with him in that time that I pastored there, and he was a real mentor for me. And um, I remember his wife died at that time. He was at that age level where many of us are, where your siblings, your spouse, a lot of times goes on to heaven. His wife died. Then his two brothers died. I did their funerals, all of them. I, it was just very difficult for a young pastor just starting out. But he kind of guided me along through that. It was amazing what he did. I remember him preaching a couple months after that in that little church that's closed now and uh, preaching about trust and obey for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. He said, dear friends, and then the more I thought about that, I thought, you know what? That church is not dead. Because our terminology is wrong. Brother Ray and I were talking about this just a few minutes ago. What we had there, and it was beautiful, was a church building. But the church, people's lives that were touched, like mine, is alive and well. And that honors not only R.C., but that honors the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? It honors the Lord Jesus Christ. We need each other. So I encourage you. I encourage you in programs. And you're going to hear a lot about that over the next six months. Like Celebrate Recovery, the AA programs, accountability groups. We need each other. Let's participate and grow in Christ. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for all that you give to us. You are absolutely amazing. We are the church, and we thank you so much for ministering. And I think that's how you are glorified when we serve each other. I think that's how we trust in you. In your name we pray, amen. Let's all stand together for our closing and remember again, dear friends, the altar is open. My glasses are not on. There we go. At least you found them. One, two, three, go. When darkness tries to roll over my bones 
When sorrow comes to steal the joy I own When brokenness and pain is all I know I won't be shaken No, I won't be shaken My fear doesn't stand a chance When I stand in your love My fear doesn't stand a chance When I stand in your love My fear doesn't stand a chance When I stand in your love Shame no longer has a place to hide I am not a captive to the lies I'm not afraid to leave my past behind Why oh, won't be shaken Why oh, won't be shaken My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love my fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love my fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in Blessings be with you. Hug at least a thousand people. We'll see you next Sunday morning, Pentecost. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, let's do it. Here.